All right. I think. Okay. I think it's recording now. Mm -hmm. Do you guys see that it's recording on the top left? Mm hmm. Yeah. Cool. Yes. All right. Susanna. Okay. Hello and welcome to this Atheist Republic Blood discussion. Um, today we are talking to Celine Oscowin and Ona Romano, who are the founders of the Association for of Atheism, Turkey. How, how do you guys say that in Turkish? Uh, they, they, wait, um, Ona is a native Turkish speaker, so you should pronounce it. Atheism, Danny. Thank you. Wait, so I knew I wasn't so going to be able to know, do that myself. How do you know if you're not a native Turkish speaker? How do you... No, she you. speaks. Her, her Turkish is real good. It's just that, you know, she, she she has an accent, just like our English accent. When I speak English, you know that you know I'm a Middle Eastern. But right. when she speaks English, she speaks with a British accent, and I'm so jealous yeah. of that. <laughs> no, just uh, my mom grew up in England and stuff, so I, I so I don't speak like a typical Israeli. Uh, but like uh, the way I speak Turkish is like. Uh, the second I say hello in Turkish, they go like, oh, yeah, where are you from and stuff. So uh, <laughs> I, it doesn't sound really good. Wait, so uh, where, are, where are you from? Uh, I grew up in Israel. Right. So you, speak, yeah. so, so you speak Hebrew, English and Turkish? Yeah. Um, also, uh, like a B1 level of Spanish because my family wow. is... Wow. No, but... It, it's because my uh, family is actually originally from Spain, but let's not get into too many details because that's okay. only the beginning, like the outline. And okay, 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 okay. It goes okay. on now on to like uh, one third of the entire world map. So, yeah. <laughs> okay. That's what we're right. talking yeah. Okay, okay, cool. Okay. Well, thank you for joining us. Um, for our audience, Onar and Celine are here to share their stories about what inspired their atheist activism and what led them to create a very special new project called the Atheist Refugee Assistant Program, or ARAP for short. So, um, yeah, let's just get started with how you became involved in this activism and what inspired you. So I believe it was, um, yeah, it was six, seven years ago when I first met Celine. Um, uh, during uh, our first uh, try of uh, establishing an atheist organization in Turkey, it was called a Congress of Atheists. It was an underground uh, organization uh, having atheists from all political backgrounds. And uh, a year after we started publishing Atheist Magazine, which was the first hard copy Atheist Magazine of the Middle East. And then um, we uh, started uh, the Association of Atheism in 2014. And um, Celine and I have been volunteering for the same cause uh, since then uh, and even before then. Uh, so we go back to, I think, 2012, 2013, something like that. And then, um, yeah, was, once after we established the Association of Turkey, uh, I mean, the uh, Association of Atheism Turkey, it was um, actually a different experience for both of us, I think. Uh, what do you think, Selin? It was, you know, having... Um, having the chance uh, to work with hundreds of atheist activists in Turkey and sharing the same ideas. Uh, it was, uh, I think it still is uh, a very unique experience and I, I feel honored to be part of that uh, job. And um, in 2016, uh, uh, I had to flee Turkey uh, to uh, seek refuge to Canada as an atheist uh, asylum seeker. And um, uh, in late 2015, there was a police raid to our headquarters uh, looking for me and another director because of some blasphemy uh, and insulting the president charges. Uh, and uh, it was because of, um, well, there were like 41 different counts, but you know, one of them I remember very specifically, which I was found guilty on later on, was that um, I uh, compared uh, Godzilla and the Green Hulk storybooks with Quran, 
and yeah that was considered as a heavy blasphemic charge so um uh, due to all these uh, charges and old cases being reversed and piling up everything i felt the need to uh, go and i came to canada to pursue my phd and uh, ma and phd studies in the discipline of global leadership and right now i am and then I served, uh, I was honored to serve as the president of Atheist Alliance International 2016-17. Uh, and then right now I am a board member of Center for Inquiry Canada and also a director of uh, Association of Atheism Turkey. Did you, uh, didn't you expect that to happen? Like, uh, so, but if a lot of people might... A lot of uh, people have this basic understanding that the reaction you get from starting an atheist organization in an Islamic country is the same. Um, like, oh, like you're going to get beheaded by the government or something like that. But they don't understand like it's very different from Islamic country to Islamic country. Like, like um, getting executed for something like that is almost almost get a guarantee, I guess, in Iran or in Saudi Arabia. In Pakistan and in Bangladesh, I would assume that you need to be mo more worried about the people rather than the government. Um, in Tunisia, you might be able to get away with it, but you're still going to have a hard time. By, um, uh, but in Turkey, in Turkey, what's the what was the situation like that, like in Turkey back then, and what it is like now? Like, would he would have. Would you be able to get away with it if you weren't like comparing Islam to Godzilla and stuff like that, starting an atheist organization? Like, what, did you expect like just an atheist organization? Would that be able to survive in Turkey? What was what was your expectations? I'm, in my case, there were 41, 41 different towns, so that was only one of them. So, oh. And I can say that most of our uh, former directors have been subjected to similar lawsuits and found guilty. Um, mm -hmm. None of them served time as of now, but almost all of them have uh, uh, criminal records due to blasphemy now. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, uh, what do you think, Selim, uh, about, uh, you know, uh, how much are we allowed to uh, do what we do in Turkey? Because, like, we are an atheist organization at the same time. We have to abide the law. We have to, you know, uh, work under the blasphemy laws and the different penal codes. So it's very mixed feeling always, you know, uh, walking on thin eyes. Yeah, it's, you know, every every post, every share, every statement we do, we have to consider, you know, okay, is this going to bring any harm to our directors? Is anybody going to get arrested? Is anybody going to get questioned uh, if a director or two uh, stays a week in jail? Then you won't have any more members and volunteers and that kind of stuff for a long time. And uh, that's going to be... Uh, literal activist burnout, you know. So yeah. Oh, um, <laughs> so yeah. All right, Sarah. Yes. Uh, well, technically, looking at it, uh, Turkey isn't ruled by religion. Uh, actually, looking at the laws, looking at the constitution, uh, the government isn't or, isn't or is. Sorry. It is. Mm -hmm. Okay. It is uh, the constitution clearly states that Turkey is a secular state. People mm. can have religion, but that doesn't mean that the state has religion because the okay. state is secular. The state doesn't have a religion of its own uh, on paper. Uh, and, and it's it, it's still the same way today, uh, but um, looking at the way it is enforced, well, um, first of all, there's a complete separation of religion and state, technically. And uh, technically, it's also against the law uh, to uh, get religion involved in politics. But they do that. Um, and when it comes to when it comes to blasphemy, actually, uh, technically, you're just not allowed to uh, to insult the religion or like people who believe. Uh, but there's a difference between uh, insulting and criticizing. Uh, and, and the problem is that sometimes 
criticism uh, could be interpreted as if it was an insult. Why? Because uh, because when you, when you have some people in the country who are very radical about their religion, uh, then then they don't want any anybody even claiming that it's uh, wrong. You know that God that maybe God doesn't exist. So uh, you know it's it's it, I think it has a lot to do with ego. Uh, so for them, it's disrespectful. You know, it's uh, like even even criticizing it, even even saying you're wrong. To them, it's like uh, you know, it's extreme disrespect because they uh, they deserve to be uh, you know like uh, the kings of the world or something like that. So yeah. this is what this is why sometimes they try to do the best they could to punish you after criticism as if it was an insult. You know, it it, it has something to do with uh, showing your power, basically. You know, to show who's the boss. You know, like even criticizing them is like an insult. So. I don't understand how could the, you're saying in their constitution is that there's supposed to be a sub separation of state and religion, but how could you have blasphemy laws? Wouldn't their blasphemy laws be unconstitutional? Well, here's the problem: uh, the uh, like how they managed to get away with it. It's just the way they write it. I think they were very smart when they wrote it because they said that you're not. It doesn't say Islam, by the way. It doesn't say that you're not allowed to insult the Quran or the Bible or Muhammad in specific. It says that you're not allowed to insult. Uh, a religious view that some people in the society may have, and and the explanation is that because you can uh, you can turn people against each other because of that, and then you know, so uh, so, so this section is actually I mean it supposedly they claim that this is uh, against people insulting each other for having different religious views. It's like, it's kind of, uh, it's like showing it from the opposite. It's like, this is how we're trying to protect people from discrimination, from, uh, uh, from hate speech. So it, this is like, it's like laughing in our faces in a way. It's like, uh, I mean, it's, they try, they, they, uh, they keep going like, look, uh, this is against discrimination. I mean, aren't you guys against discrimination? So, you know, here it goes, here you go. Uh, but, but I don't think there, there was even one case when, uh, let's say, uh, a Christian guy sued uh, a Muslim guy for insulting Jesus. Or, 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 or that a... Uh, oh, wow. Well. Uh, or a Muslim... It, I'm saying it never happened. Oh. Oh, or, or like, let, let's think in, uh, in, in uh, you know, in the atheist view, uh, it never happened that an atheist uh, sued somebody who, who claimed that atheists, are, I don't know, like, actually, even if it's an actual insult. Uh, I have to, I have to, I have to I stop have you done. there, ma'am. That was until <laughs> yesterday. Yes. <laughs> that was until yesterday when we sued uh, a is pro Islamic religious newspaper for insulting atheists using the same law. So wait, yeah, what? Uh, send me yeah. information about so, this. I want to talk about this on the podcast. You gotta send me. You gotta send me. <laughs> okay. Like, what like, the real. Okay. Uh, um, there's a difference between saying that a lawsuit like a lawsuit uh, like that never succeeded and between saying that nobody ever done that you can guess why nobody ever done that nobody ever used this law despite the fact that that's what it, that's what it's for not just for muslims also for christians for jews for atheists everybody because it doesn't say islam you're just not allowed to insult uh people's uh let's let, let's not just say religious beliefs but also like um ideas and opinions about religion, like their religious view, let's say. Um, but no one ever dared suing someone unless it's about insulting Islam. Why? Because people are burnt out. They, they, they know the, the country that they live in. So, and they know that they always use uh, this exact clause in order to punish people who criticize Islam. So until this day, 
uh, never actually tr nobody actually tried to use it for a different purpose that's also purposeful. Um, because it, it's about, you know, going like, oh, come on, do you really think it's going to work? Do you really think some, something's going to happen? You know, like, uh, probably the judge is going to laugh at our faces because it's like, don't you know that they just use it, you know, for people who criticize Islam? But here's the thing, that law, they keep saying that this law exists against, uh, uh, against discrimination and hate speech. And, and this, is, this, this is how they, they keep raising it in front of our faces. And if that's the case, that clause exactly has to protect us too. Mm. So that, there you go. So wait, so yeah, I mean, even if the judge laughs it off, it's still very valuable because now everybody can point, if the case, if the case whether it succeeds or it doesn't succeed, it's still a victory either way. Because if it doesn't succeed, you guys now have, something to refer to to show that this is a one-sided law but can, tell us more about this this case like yes so since yesterday you guys made history so and, yeah two days ago two days yeah. ago there was an article on yeni akit newspaper uh which is a uh, most bigot newspaper in turkish history i believe uh very pro islamic very pro erdogan mm -hmm. anyhow they uh, made a piece uh, on uh, atheism and how idiotic atheism is, how um, stupid morons our atheists are, and uh, they are just lost uh, victims of their stupidity. They just are lost in the ideas of atoms and the more <laughs> research, yeah, the more research you do. That's all it. I think about. How did they know? <laughs> No problems with translation. That's that's that, that's you know. Even when you read it in Turkish, it sounds really yeah. You read it, and then they link they link being an atheist. Uh, you know um, uh, that it's a high risk that you can become a serial killer uh, in the future. Uh, and of you course. know, um, not only that, and there were other points of this article too. Um, Oh, and they also say this is why in United States uh, they write uh, in God we trust on all one dollar bills because they try to keep their people non atheist. So that's why uh, they. So it was. It's a hilarious masterpiece. I love the article. It's a good humor piece, and serious. unintentionally. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, seriously, it cannot be more stupid, but. At the same time, it was a great uh, opportunity for us to use the same blasphemy law, which they, you know, uh, portray as the hate speech law. And then we just kind of reversed it and tried to hack the system by using it against that Islamic newspaper. Right, so we're not hacking the system. <laughs> nah, not really, because we know that it's not going to go forward. We know yeah, that it's going to be a no say. action. We're not hacking the system. It's not about a loophole. This section is actually against hate speech. So we will use it against hate speech. Right, and maybe right. for the first time in years, it's actually going to do some good. Right. Well, I mean, uh, so to, to, be f to be clear, if they weren't using this, I mean, in an ide ideal world, we, do, we would like a, uh, Muslims to be able to publish um you know their problems with atheism no matter how ridiculous they it is like we are not like i'm i'm guessing you guys could correct me if i'm wrong you guys are not suggesting that muslims shouldn't be able to do that um you guys are just trying to show the hypocrisy here right like they should we, be able to criticize they should yeah. be able to insult us Yes, yes, yes. So I know, I know, you know, I know. I just wanted to make it clear for the audience. Yeah, 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 I yeah, know yeah. You're, yeah. Oh, you know, you know, they, they should be able to insult us. They should be able to do all that. But if I'm going to prison when I say the same sentence right. to a Muslim, and then if a Muslim says the same shit to me, then it should happen the you know other way around yeah. as well. That's yeah. so not just you just you just. It's like you Look, it's like we need to, uh, we need to have an agreement in these cases. Uh, it's not just about the law and 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 all the Muslims against all the atheists. That's not the case. But for example, when I uh, talk to a friend of mine who believes in Islam, I, I send some ground rules, and I go like, okay, we can send some ground rules, but first of all, uh, they have to be equal. For example, let's say that that person is really kind of sensitive, 
like uh, he gets offended really quickly. I go like, okay, then I'm uh, I'm, I'm going to be very polite, but it's like there's one condition: you're going to have to to have the same standards when you criticize me. So we can we can go ahead and be very polite towards each other. But maybe there's another uh, believer who, uh, who who's not so sensitive, and, and and he goes like, you know what? Let's let's criticize each other like crazy, like no limit. Okay, mm. and I go like, okay, but I'm gonna do the same thing as well. So like, no hard feelings when I do the same. Right. Uh, so basically, if 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 in this country uh, they they go like, oh, that's an insult to Islam, blah blah blah, then 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 you're not gonna do the same. Like, we will not succumb to uh, being considered uh, inferior just because we have a different opinion. Yeah, the the, pro- the problem Muslims and Christians have is that if if you if any society wants to introduce the smallest amount of limitation on insult um and if they're consistent with that limitation on all sides the quran and the bible would be banned mm-hmm. the quran and the bible itself would have to be banned because it's they are they are extremely anti kafir and anti heretic, um, so for their sake they should be pro secular. For if they want their Quran and the Bible, like I mean, it wouldn't they wouldn't pass any test, any test that is trying to avoid people being insulted or people being uh, t- uh, targeted or people being threatened. Any any rule like that would necessarily have to ban the Quran and the Bible. I'm not advocating for binding the Bible or the Quran. I'm just saying that that would that would uh, that's the conclusion from any law like that. So, I mean, we tolerate Muslims and Christians where with books that promotes us be, being tortured for eternity for our opinions. We tolerate them, and they can't seem to tolerate us simply by simply us saying, you know, we think what you believe in is bullshit. They like they think we're being disrespectful. I mean, it's not even comparable to what they are um, promoting. I would never promote the same things that they right. pro- like, like that they promote against me. I would never ever promote the same things against them. Right, exactly. What, what's Selen? What's your experience been like? Um, and how how did you live in Turkey for how long? Uh, since two thousand nine. It's been eleven years. Right. So how was like how was your experience with the government? Um. Her- well, uh, I I I don't have any lawsuits. But it's oh. because, like, uh, I, I've been careful, basically. I know how mm. to be careful. Um, and, I mean, I wouldn't do the same joke Honor did. Mm. She wouldn't... learns She learns from examples in front of her. So, yeah. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> they say yeah. um, a smart man learns from his own mistakes. A wise man learns from other people. So, Celine is very wise. <laughs> <laughs> you? Um... So uh, I, I I haven't experienced anything like that, but um, that doesn't mean that that uh, that my life is a rose garden in here. Uh, so um, it's it's like in in one way, um, when it comes to defending our rights, I do not go soft ever. Um, first of all, it has nothing to do with Islam. It has nothing to do even whether. Islam is right or not. It doesn't matter, actually. It doesn't matter whose opinion is the right and the righteous one. It's just that um, it doesn't matter what we think, like, what's my opinion, what's your opinion, uh, we have to be equal. Like, the minute, the minute that that, uh, that you claim that I should kind of uh, apologize for being an atheist, or, like, apologize in advance before I say something, uh, or that I should somehow uh, accept that like I don't believe in what you believe, but because your lifestyle is actually the righteous one, then I I, I should uh, accept you as a little bit of my superior. That's not happening. When I, when it comes to discrimination, I'm I'm very fierce. I'm I'm, I'm angry, uh, and and uh, I, I I don't let it pass. I just uh, I go like no, no. If you're doing that, that's discrimination. That's a human rights violation. I'm not wrong for being an atheist. You're wrong for discriminating me. And if you do that, then then we're going to do something against it. You, you're not going to get away with it. Like, you shouldn't get away with it. Uh, so I can go soft on that. I mean, after all, in Turkey, we have we received lots of... Uh, we, we had to put up with lots of um, 
uh, death threats by uh, that there was an association of Sharia mm -hmm. that was established uh, you know right after we uh, found our organization the counter step was uh, for the Islamic people to establish an organization an NGO called Association of Sharia and the, on their first ever interview the president of the organization Uh, gives a death threat to the leaders of uh, directors of our organization about you know if we continue our uh, events and um, uh, articles and all that that you know they are not going to hesitate to do what uh, Quran orders them to do uh, yeah. kind of thing and they they cite the verses and stuff like that so and that's on a interview on with video interview so you know like um, <laughs> second think about it first like if someone says something like that like are you gonna go like oh please don't do it please we'll be good let's like, just you know uh you know meet halfway maybe i'll become a little bit less atheist and you become a little less uh um stabby stabby and you know would, it, would that be okay i mean what i mean you can't go soft in this and here's the thing when you when you go soft when you go soft They become way too brave, you know, to go like, okay, they're not going to be able to do anything. They're really scared, so I'm going to do it. And then, you know, <laughs> so you, you need to give, a, you know, like a strong answer. So, so they won't be, you know, so they won't be tempted to try. You have to stand you, strong. I'm still laughing scared? over stabby stabby. <laughs> <laughs> do, does that scare you sometimes, though, the stabby stabby part? Yeah, that's why we installed two panic buttons in our headquarters because we received too much death threats by fax, email, phone, social media. And then we had to install two panic buttons with a private uh, security company, which is hooked up to the nearest police station. And so, you know, um, would the police come with Do you feel like the police is going to be fair to like they're going to come running to save atheists? No, man, po police, police is saying Allah when they are running towards the oh. protesters. That's the police we have. So, you know, uh, yeah, it's it's not, not gonna. Not all of them, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So. I mean, what happened to the whole secular revolution and all the people that want, you know? Oh, the, the secular Turkey, that's history. That was the first republic, I believe, from 1923. to up until some five years ago, I believe, or 10 years ago, when the first AKP um, Erdogan's, uh, you know, uh, people became president. And then that's like, you know, that was the first time a highly religious uh, imam uh, took office as a president in Turkey. And Imam became a president, so But you know. Aren't there different. still a lot of people out there that would, you know, a lot of activists, a lot of people that want to take uh, Turkey back to a secular? Um, yeah, world? yeah, yeah. There are, but you know, then again, uh, it's not something you can do it by uh, the current voting system because it has been already documented and even. proven that you know there have been lots of frauds during the elections they you know rigged it many times but yet you know who you gonna like uh, what you gonna do file a lawsuit well who is the justice department you know like uh, it's, it's a, yeah mm -hmm. so the what of elections oh okay. when it comes to appeals regarding the ballot mm -hmm. uh, the ones who make the decisions Uh, um, the high council of elections, and uh, you can get what, there. What, what personally? Why did you decide to get involved with atheist activism in Turkey? Oh, like me? Uh, well, first of all, okay, like me, right? Yeah. Uh, well, it it doesn't matter where I am, uh, because um, I I care a lot for human rights, not just atheist rights. Um, uh, and and. And uh, I, I realized that, well, um, in this country, apparently, uh, apparently, you know, um, 
some people had a problem with human rights. When I say having a problem, I'm talking about uh, not ve being very much in favor of it. Um, and, and that's a problem because human rights, you know, uh, you know, the, for example, the Declaration of Human Rights, you know, with the voting and everything, you know, and, and it was accepted in the UN. So all member states uh, have to commit to it. It's not it, it's not. Just you know, uh, you know, deciding one day, oh, I want to be a humanist today, and 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 then on another day you go like, oh, now I don't care about that shit anymore. Like you, you have to be committed to human rights. It's not something each and every country can decide on. It's something very basic. Um, oh, and I guess within the past ten minutes, you realize how angry I get against these things. Uh, so um, and I was also an atheist already um, so uh, it doesn't matter what the country is which country it is it just that uh, Turkey is one of the countries that has a problem in this section in this department so we should do something it doesn't it doesn't matter like uh, where you were born where you were raised how much time you you consider to stay in, in that place uh, I uh, I just I want to do my best in order to try to make the world a little bit better like as much as I can as one person so if I'm in Turkey right now, then, you know, let's concentrate on uh, the local problems of Turkey and try to do something about it. I think that's, I think that's a perfect, perfect transition, transition to act. There's a bit of an echo. Okay, go on to that. Um, I think that's a really good transition to start asking you guys about the ARAP program. Wait, no, so, I have one more question oh, before we oh go boy. there. Oh, uh, boy. Sorry, sorry. One last question. Would you guys... If we go uh, back and given all the, because I, I don't think um, a lot of people appreciate, uh, I mean, this interview by itself is not highlighting how much crap you guys had to go through, right? So, I mean, a lot of people are like, oh my God, that's, that was bad, that's sad. But based on my conversations with owner, I think like if we actually went into the details and how it affected your life and everything, people would realize that this that this is a nightmare, right? Um, but given everything you went through, if you went back on her, would you still get involved in atheist activism in Turkey and all of that? I have given a lot, uh, including my freedom, including my home, including being able to see my parents for one, one last time. So, yeah, I sacrificed a lot and now I'm a, you know, fugitive of law in Turkey. I cannot even go back and I'm an asylum seeker. So, um, the short answer is no, I would not change one day. I have, uh, uh, I, you know, cont uh, contributed to atheist activism. In my case, I used to be a political activist until... 2013 Gezi protests, um, Taksim Gezi Park protests, uh, which was the biggest uh, secular protest or the biggest protest period in Turkish history with 1.5 million people, uh, you know, uh, visiting the uh, site uh, only in Istanbul alone. And in the whole country, it was uh, probably around 5 million. So, yeah, um, it was the biggest prote uh, protest in the history of Turkey. And it was a secular protest uh, against the uh, pro-Islamic government. Um, and um, during that protest, we lost eight friends. And I was uh, in the planning and... Lost um, as in... Uh, they were killed by police and um, I was in the planning part of uh, that and that protests and um, after that it really affected me a lot and I kind of um, wanted to get away from uh, political activism and uh, soon after I um, committed myself to human rights activism and atheist activism came along. Okay, so, Susanna? 
um, so you wouldn't change a thing then, right? That's what. That's oh uh, no, no. I, I would. I mean, I don't regret uh, becoming an atheist activist, even though I have given up. Uh, I have to give away. Give, you know, lose many things in life, which I think were precious. I still think that you know the um, the value in this and the you know uh, the feeling it gives you, the satisfaction it gives you to be able to help. Uh, people uh, to be able to enlighten others in terms of, you know, in the light of reason and science. Uh, I think it's a big thing. And I think, um, you know, uh, no, I wouldn't change a day. Selen, do you agree? Uh, I agree, obviously. I, uh, I, I, I don't regret anything. Uh, but I, I'm not sure that me saying that I don't regret anything would... Uh, would even uh, mean much uh, compared to Honor's story because uh, he, he, he really lost a lot. I mean, uh, Turkey was his one and only homeland. He was uh, born in Turkey, raised in Turkey. Um, so uh, I'm, not just, I'm not just talking about the fact that he had to, uh, uh, you know, apply for asylum. I mean, even, even if he had, like, uh, different options in order to move to a different country, it, it doesn't matter because that, that's his one and only homeland. Uh, so uh, me having to go to a different country would not be the same, you know? If I, if I uh, let's say that uh, I, I've come to a point that, uh, that uh, everybody hates me in Turkey or something like that, uh, and, and I go like, okay, I, I, uh, I just can't take it anymore, I, I have to leave, then obviously it would be horrible because I've lived here for more than 10 years, but for Anna, I can guess that, I mean, he lived in only one place, so he lost uh, the only place that he could ever feel actually home. Uh, so again, me saying that I don't regret a thing doesn't mean much. Right. But Wait, yeah, so I don't. You're in Turkey right now. Yes. Um, how do you do you leave much? Like, do you guys see you know see each other, or like, are you just there? Like, do you does your activism involve going to Canada or going to do you go to Israel at all? Um, or you have like when was the last time you left Turkey? Uh, well, uh, for uh, for activism pur purposes. Well, in general, like I'm just saying, like you're you for you if you decide to leave Turkey, you're gonna you're able to like just go. Where is your? Yes. Yeah, go on, sir. Yes, yes, yes. I uh, I have options. Right. That I, uh, I I have options. I, I can go to Europe. Go she to has Europe. three passports. Yeah, that's why she's the president. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm also an EU yeah. citizen. You know, a Spanish citizen. So this is what I'm saying. I mean, it's very different when I say that I uh, that I don't regret a thing. Uh, it's it's kind of easy for me to say, you know. You're like uh, a multi. You're like a UN in one person. <laughs> Like, <laughs> and these three countries are only the ones that I'm a citizen of. You know? Right. Okay. Um, okay. So let's go to um, Arab. How th this is this a new program? Is this an old program? Is this a previous program that was changed? Like, how long have you guys been doing Arab, and what is it about? Sorry, okay. Susan, I I stole your question. Good. So I will make the I will uh, give the intro, and then Celine, you can take over uh, take over from where you like. Um, so um, uh, this is a new program, uh, and it's gonna be uh, in it's in the works. It will uh, start uh, probably on July first. So we are just counting down. And um, so after six years of experience on field in Turkey. And producing over 200 events, we, um, you know, uh, came to some findings, and um, we saw that a significant, like, there are over five million refugees in Turkey currently, and five million refugees. Ninety-five percent of them has relocated within the past seven years. And a significant number of those refugees are political refugees who, you know, had to flee their homelands just because they renounced Islam. 
and um, we were, I think, inspired by the the Atheist Asylum Project of Atheist Alliance International and the Secular Rescue Program of uh, Center for Inquiry. Uh, and uh, we wanted to take a more active role in assisting non-believer asylum seekers currently living in Turkey. And yes, myself being an asylum seeker at the other end of the world I may have had a little to do with motivating me in that direction when I was uh, crafting this uh, program with Selin. So... Um, So, yeah, um, first, I would like to remind you that the Association of Atheism Turkey, Atheism Dani, is a small NGO, very small organization with around 250 members. So we don't have, you know, uh, a big budget. Uh, we are barely able to keep our doors open with the support of our volunteers and founding members. So, you know, having said that, we wish to you know, provide a much needed service for non-believers, uh, for the non-believing refugees in Turkey in general. And uh, so the aim of the program is to assist uh, the uh, non-believers in Turkey uh, who are running from persecution to start a new life. Uh, and uh, number one problem they have is the language barrier. Now, due to the language barriers, like most refugees and asylum seekers, when they go to a new, you know, place, uh, they need to find a suitable home, roommate, or work. And especially in a Muslim-dominated, Muslim-majority country, a pro-Islamic country uh, like Turkey, especially for the past two decades, in a Muslim-dominated society, You know, it's really hard to find those due to your disbelief, due to your non-believing state. Think so, about it for a second. Think about it for a second. You uh, you ran away from uh, a country uh, because 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 it's it's a radically religious and 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 the place you went to uh, avoid persecution, maybe even execution because of of your disbelief, is again a place that's also kind of going in the same direction it's not as bad uh but it, it's also kind of uh you know uh you, you need to keep your motivation up uh and, and you need to be strong about this because uh it's it's like you ran away but the only place you managed to go you know for the time being that's turkey so it's like uh for those people it's basically like choosing between bad and worse so actually uh, Actually, this is very relevant to my experience because my, um, you know, experience, a, a lot of my activism is in Iran because not because I value it more, but just because I speak Persian um, and the refugees that we deal with uh, in Iran, they the number one destination, the ones that the atheists that are trying to get away from uh, the government there, they end up in Turkey most of them right yeah. so the difference is like iran is a lot worse for atheists than it is, than turkey but still once they land in turkey it's not like they are now it's hunky-dory and it's fine for them to be an anti-islam activist there let's say it's not like being in norway or sweden you know you know it's a bit different no, <laughs> right <laughs> so anyway, uh, in the case of being a free-thinking, openly secular, non-religious infidel in today's pro-Islamic Turkey, finding a room, roommate, work, is a shared home, house is extremely hard. And even if you find one, once your disbelief, once your atheist state is discovered by your boss or your landlord or your roommate, then you will go back to square one again and start over. So, you know, that's the major problem. Go into the people. Yeah, yet, yet. There are, like, many like-minded Turkish non-believers. Open-minded secularists, non-religious minorities, atheists, who are willing to help atheist asylum seekers and refugees in terms of accommodation and work. So, we recognized that there was a need to build such a network or program to address this issue, and that was, you know... Um, how we move forward. So the plan is, uh, what we are putting in action uh, very soon, is to hire an employee, 
uh, to address uh, certain uh, needs and to provide certain services. Uh, now, first, the employee uh, is going to be either one person who speaks, reads, writes fluently in Arabic, Persian, Turkish, and English, both in writing and speaking. So, you know, if we can find somebody like that, it, it's a full-time position uh, for 3,500 Turkish liras per month. And that person is going to work at our Istanbul headquarters with the general manager of the organization, who is also how another, another full-time employee. 3,500 3, How much is that in US dollars? Dollar? Don't uh, ask. Don't ask. That, that, that's good because, uh, the currency changes uh, by the minute. So, uh, yeah. So, like, I might say something, like, uh, according to what I heard yesterday. Hold on. I, I need to use. Okay. I on need the GoFundMe, it says 3,000 USD. Oh, wait, no. No. I just want to pe for people to have an understanding of how much this will cost you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Okay, okay. Twenty-five hundred Turkish liras cost five hundred nineteen U.S. dollars. A month. Five hundred so, U.S. Okay. dollars a month is the salary of that employee in Turkey. Okay. Some people might think that's very low, but that 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 gets you by in Turkey, doesn't it? Yes, it gets you by. That's by the way, the minimum wage is three thousand Turkish liras. So this is like five hundred liras above the minimum wage. Okay, so but that's a, isn't that too low for somebody that speaks four languages and writes in four languages? Um, yes, yes. Sorry, you know, sorry, but, <laughs> thank you, just... thank you for helping the cows. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah. well, okay, l let me let me help let me help the cows. Let me help the cows. Maybe you could pay them more if you had more people that were supporting the cows. So we check have link it now. It's not that we like it very much, you know. Yeah, but you uh, you um, you but I, you know. I hope we can pay double. I yeah, hope we can, can pay can. double. It's all about yeah. how much funding and sponsors we get on board. Right, right. And <laughs> just, this is just, that's the minimum. Let's say that's the minimum amount that we could pay to that kind of person because we cannot possibly pay them the exact minimum wage. So right, right. the minimum we could pay that person is something a little bit above it. Uh, and uh, yeah. after after the first six months, you're just trying to be realistic with the resources that you have. <laughs> Um, yeah. You know, you, have, you don't have very much resources. And again, link is in the description if you guys want to help the program uh, for for them to be able to uh, have more resources. But go on, sir. After the first five, uh, six months, uh, you know, uh, I'm hoping that we will give a chunky raise, uh, depending on the, you know, budget we have, donations we have, and everything is very transparent. Uh, so far, the sponsors of this program are Center for Inquiry and Atheist Alliance International and Atheism Derneği. Uh, and we hope more international or um, multinational organizations are going uh, to work, join on board. Uh, so the employees' responsibilities, we have... Uh, by the way, that was the number one option to have a person who speaks four languages as a full-time employee. If we cannot find somebody with that qualities, as you have pointed out, then what we will do is we are we will aim for two part-time uh, staff, uh, one fluent in Arabic, English, Turkish, the other fluent in Persian, Turkish, English. This is the plan B, which may be seen as a more realistic uh, approach. But um, we already have a few applicants who speaks all four languages, but we will see how it plays out. Um, so, yeah, uh, the responsibilities of the employee is that uh, number one is finding accommodation, accommodation solutions for atheist refugees and asylum seekers in Turkey, like helping applicants uh, to post ads on various local, regional and nationwide online platforms to help, help them to apply, correspond, translate, uh, assist, intervene in the process when it's needed. So, and number two is finding jobs for atheist refugees uh, by helping them uh, to translate their CVs and resumes to Turkish 
because that's the first thing you need when you come to Turkey. You need your resume in Turkish so you can apply and find a job. So that's uh, another thing. That's a service that needs to be provided. And we will provide templates and assistance to post or apply for ads and set interviews to correspond again. And the third service we are planning to provide is receiving application from atheist asylum seekers uh, in Turkey for legal help. We in the Association of Atheism, we have a legal team of pro bono lawyers uh, and some of them are immigration lawyers. So uh, once uh, somebody needs some legal help, a lawyer, we will forward them to the necessary volunteer lawyer and they will take over the case. So we will also provide legal help. Number four is uh, the service we will provide is receiving applications for issuing letters of reference, letters of verification or letters of support to the asylum seekers for their existing respective asylum applications. If you're an asylum seeker, you know that those letters of reference, letters of support, letters of verification are crucial in your case. And uh, another thing we can do is we can verify, evaluate the authenticity of the claim and uh, we can have a secondary verification from the uh, sources in that origin country and we can uh, uh, verify and uh, confirm it uh, with our existing UN and EU statuses, which may weigh some weight. So uh, number five service, the last service we provide is assisting applicants regarding their submissions for pocket money, allowance, scholarship applications to Turkish or international agencies programs, institutions, foundations, secular, humanist, atheist, charities, etc. So we don't provide rent help. We don't provide uh, grocery help. We don't provide cash assistance in that regard. We don't provide direct funding. What we do is we can guide you into which organization you need to submit if you need some scholarship or allowance, pocket money or that kind of uh, financial help. So even though we are not providing it, we are help trying to help you uh, and guide you. We don't so, provide it because we simply don't have the money. Exactly. But, yeah. but also I think it's not the most helpful thing to do. I mean, I think you guys have t touched exactly where the, you could provide the most um, help, I mean, get the most return on your investment. Like you're, instead of just giving people money, you're trying to help them to find a more continuous, consistent source of income. Um, and I think like that, that benefits them. In, like if you give somebody a thousand dollars, that's not going to last long, but if you, you could spend a fraction of that, helping them find a job and you, you know, that's going to be a lot more helpful to them. And also this method that you're using really um, helps avoid people scamming you and taking advantage of your uh, help because there's a lot of people trying to like find these programs and lie about, exaggerate how bad their case is. But, you know, you're basically filtering those kind of people out automatically by not handing out cash to people, right? Like, um, and I can also tell you that but the services that you're providing is exactly what we've noticed people coming out of Iran and going to Turkey, exactly what is needed the most. Like you guys are, I don't, you probably have access to a lot of good information given, you know, based on what I've seen that your, your, uh, your, the suggestions that you're coming up with, right? Like the refugees that come up in, land in Turkey, like they don't, they don't speak in language. They can't, I mean, the average refugee is having a hard time finding a job, finding ways to take care of themselves. But then the ex-Muslim atheist ones have to deal with a lot more than the average refugee because now if the person that they're hiring them all of a sudden realizes that they're goddamn heathen, they are at more risk of you know losing their job. So, I mean, one thing else I want to mention about how important your work is that you're doing a lot of a lot of atheists who run away from Iran and land in these countries, um, they end up pretending that they're Christian because 
there's a lot of Christian organizations out there helping refugees, right? And I think this is such a shame to the atheist community that we're not there for each other, that the Christians are there for each other, that you have to pretend that you belong to another community for you, for, so that you could get their help. Like, this is, this is not their fault. This is our fault. This is our community not standing up, not defending, not protecting each other. And this is, this is what I say to the people that say, oh, why are we getting together and co- starting an organization? This is what religions do. To them, I say, like, fuck you. you know, fuck you. This is why atheists are being targeted, targeted, attacked, discriminated against, oppressed. Because Cause you're allowed. Because you're allowed. You, you allow, because you allow it. And you, have, you are giving the monopoly of community and support and charity to religious organizations, right? So, I mean, this, so thank you guys for doing this. Like, <laughs> No, that's the problem. I, I will give a little teaser, by the way. Um, Armin was a guest speaker uh, last September 18th, 2019 at Victoria, BC, at a panel discussion event organized by CFI and AI jointly. Um, the topic was protecting blasphemers. And um, over there, uh, you also uh, talked a lot about um, why atheist uh, movement uh, lacks support mechanisms internationally and uh, the atheist uh, people who try to show themselves uh, as uh, Jewish or Christian or as or, you know member of any other religion, Muslim, just to be able to get by and to receive such a help uh, because there is no other secular alternative. So, um, yeah, and uh, we will be publishing that talk uh, probably this week. And, oh. um, you know, uh, I know it's been long de- overdue, but uh, yeah, here it comes. So um, that's, uh, that is uh, specifically what you have talked about uh, and among many other topics uh, on that talk. So that's why I wanted to remind it. Uh, but um, going back to your question, Yes, my experience with atheist asylum seekers uh, while I was serving, uh, before I was honored to serve as the president of AAI, I was uh, I worked uh, for a year as the asylum director of Atheist Alliance. And as an asylum director, I have uh, in, uh, evaluated over dozens of cases. Um, and... What one of my findings was that, you know, almost half of the applications coming from Middle East is found to be not true, further uh, followed further investigation, Mm. you know, uh, and uh, that's another thing how people are, how bad, you know, I mean, the, the, the distinction, the difference between economic migrants and asylum seekers is mm-hmm. most people don't know these different and you know they just want to relocate to have a better economic life yes Which, and but by the way that, okay but a different right ways yeah but do. but but you know when you try to do it as you know showing yourself uh, as an atheist activist and as an atheist asylum seeker and you fabricate evidence then it becomes highly illegal. Uh, no not- atheist organization or activist can stand right. behind you. You know, Leave so yeah. for, for a second. Um, I, I I don't really care if it's legal or illegal. You're basically abusing uh, an NGO's uh, good intentions. If people right. keep faking it, that then, then the money will not go to the people who actually need it. Let, 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 hold on, let, let's just be clear because a lot of people might not understand. Um, so, the ref, you know, if you're a refugee, what you're doing is a refugee and asylum seeker are basically interchangeable, right? Um, so, to be a refugee, you have to be somebody that 
needs to get out of where you are because of direct risks to you, to your life, to your safety, to your freedom. Um, and this is part of human rights agreements that all countries have uh, signed into that this is that they accept a certain number of refugees. Unfortunately, there are a lot of people who are economic migrants. They're, they do, you know, even if they are ex-Muslim atheists, there's no, like, there could be an ex-Muslim atheist in Iran, but they haven't published or said anything. And they're like, oh, I would like to go to somewhere else where I could say openly whatever I want, or maybe they want to upgrade their lifestyle. But even if they, if it's not because of their lifestyle, they just want to be in a free country, there is no direct immediate risk to their lives. And by applying for asylum, uh, by trying to become a refugee, they're taking the spot of another person that is at risk, that is an immediate risk, that needs a lot of help. And again, when we, uh, just as Selen said, we're not saying that do not be an econ economic migrant, but do not. What we're saying is that do not use the asylum-seeking resources out there for the refugees. Do not use that as a method. There are other things for you for you to be a legal migrant to another country. I don't know, maybe student visas, work what? visas, other methods. But do not use the methods that are there and the resources that are there for people who are at risk because you are actively putting people in harm's way if you if you use those tools. I also want to... What? For it. what? The logic is very simple. Uh, it's okay to want to do this thing we call uh, a brain drain. That's fine. No problems with that. Thinking about it for, for a second, um, an economical refugee. What happens if that person stays stays for like one more year in his uh, in his uh, like current country? What happens? Basically nothing. But if that person, the one who who is uh, facing uh, persecution, maybe even execution because of him being an atheist, he needs to get out right now. If he stays for six months more, maybe. Maybe it'll be too late. I will also give a little bit feedback on the, uh, you know, uh, the uh, what I have discussed with many uh, pro bono international immigration lawyers is that um, there is also another thing that we need to recognize. Every time uh, somebody applies uh, for political asylum and uh, that immigration division finds that case, fake every time they do that um let's say there are uh, in 2020 there are uh, 45 application from x country and out of those 45 there is 20 25 fake ones or you know the ones that have been refused well once they uh, realize that they raise the bar for that country in terms of the uh, required letters of verification, letters of support, letters of confirmation, evidences, uh, you know, solid evidences and uh, all these stuff. They keep raising the bar. So every, you know, fake atheist asylum uh, claimer uh, makes it very hard for the next guy mm. who has a real need. Right. So that's how do you guys uh, detect? How do you guys, when you guys going through the applications, how do you guys decide? I don't know if you can tell us. Actually, if you can't tell us, don't tell us. But is there a way to tell us that? Um, how do you recognize who's a real refugee and who's not? Most of the time, bit, but maybe you, oh no, maybe we should. No, no, uh, no, okay, don't. No, 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 never mind. no, 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 I will just tell what is publicly uh, available on our website and GoFundMe page, uh, which, just which, get ready. <laughs> which, which, which is 100% true. We, uh, we need, we always go for confirmation from a secondary source in the origin country. Mm -hmm. So if we don't have anybody in that country available, uh, it's very hard. Uh, it will most likely uh, won't get uh, approved by us. But we have somebody uh, almost in everywhere uh, who can just, you know, tell us if it's authentic or not. And 
he can bring it to a lawyer. A lawyer in a few days will tell you if it's authentic or not. Uh, they they have some uh, verification methods, but um, we always try to go with uh, confirmation from secondary sources uh, on the field. By the way, I know Suzanne has questions, and she I can see she's highlighting one in the Google Doc, but I'm just not letting her speak for some reason. Sorry, Suzanne. <laughs> but, um, okay, Selen, you wanted to say something? I interrupted you, sorry. No, I just added the... Uh, oh, okay. Okay, Susanna. <laughs> can I talk now? <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, um, I'm sorry. I, I told her to lead this conversation, and I didn't lead her, let her speak at all. Go on. <laughs> you, took all my, you took all my questions. Um, oh. <laughs> so I <laughs> right, wanted to ask you guys how our community can best support your work. Yeah. Our community meaning Atheist Republic? Yes. Okay, good. Um, well, we, we, we are aware that Atheist Republic is also in the works with uh, AAI and other organizations about coming up with uh, a blasphemy protection uh, program, you know, protecting blasphemers. And uh, we know that you have some project in the works and we would be more than happy to integrate what we have built so far. And we will be more than happy to work together uh, as much as we can. Uh, and the first thing we want to establish is uh, to get the leading organizations on board and to create a, a shared uh, database uh, about the uh, asylum, atheist asylum seekers or non-believer asylum seekers so that uh, every organization doesn't have to go through the same verification and confirmation steps because it takes lots of resources uh, and time and effort. Uh, and uh, most of the time, you know, halfway through, it's unsuccessful and, you know, it just uh, extends into years and it just disappears. So, yeah, uh, to make everything faster and uh, to make everything uh, more effective, we would like to have established a network, not only amongst the people in Turkey who can accommodate and give work to atheist refugees and asylum seekers, but also in terms of the international atheist uh, humanist organizations who would like to support this initiative and would like to become a party of the shared database of these people so we can uh, help them uh, as best as we can. If for to to help us, you can I believe in the uh, in this video description you can see the um, uh, GoFundMe page and uh, the official page of our organization, and um, you can also support us on social media, and you can uh, support us by funding. There is no such thing as a small donation. <laughs> right. Uh, can I make a suggestion on how we can potentially help? And you could tell me uh, if this is good or not. This is a suggestion I made to AAI as well. Um, but what I think one thing we can do is we could be kind of like your unofficial media directors. That the way that I the way that would work is that if you go. Uh, as you continue, you're going to have people that you hire, people that you volunteer for you, refugees that you end up helping. Uh, what we can do is we could keep conducting interviews like this with the people that you're working and the people that you're helping, the ones that it's safe for them to come and do an interview, right? And by and they could come and they could tell us their experiences they had going through their personal story, going through their fears, through their struggles, through their hopes, and, you know, share their stories with our audience. Um, and because people like, you know, in, in people would uh, enjoy hearing their stories, right? This is something that people would be interested in. But while they do that, they could also mention the experience that they had, uh, how you guys helped them, 
um, how they came in contact with you, if it's safe to say. And every one of these interviews could be an excuse for us to also intru- introduce the program to our audience and get people to maybe support it as well, right? So Yeah, the, the, the only problem is that the process in Turkey unfortunately takes up to seven, eight years. And during the process, most of the time, they don't want to, um, you know, f- uh, come out and uh, because... We could do it without mentioning yeah. their name or without... We will find camera. a way. We will we find will... a way. We will yeah, find yeah. a way. Yeah. 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 And also maybe the volunteers... Oh, Celine, you were muted. Yeah. Well, it, uh, the interview is not going to be in Turkish. It's going to be... Uh, yeah. Exactly. We, We have, I mean, he he is the translator we need, right? So, <laughs> Armin himself. <laughs> well, no, no, I mean, no, 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 I'm just saying. I mean, maybe they would, maybe they wouldn't be too afraid because, uh, okay, right now they're in Turkey, but you know, it's not um, a uh, Turkish podcast yeah. or like uh, uh, or a Turkish YouTube channel, and it's not going to be in Turkish. I so. also know that I think Armin also does podcasts in Persian too. Yeah, we we have uh, that yeah. That's very popular, actually. The reason why it's is popular is because YouTube hasn't introduced any sensitive uh, uh, keywords against Persian words, so it's not getting <laughs> hurt. But like our English channel, even though though it has a lot of more um, subscribers, it doesn't get as much views as our smaller Persian channel. Because there's no there's no suppressing of it because it's political and not because we're speaking Persian, so it's it's actually surprisingly have a lot of views for a small channel, so it's good. So, yeah, but yeah, we have a lot of we are actually making people are noticing us in um, in the atheist community in Iran. Like we we're making a lot of we're now a big deal. By like, the way, I, I also would like to remind everybody that I am also a proud. Uh, admin of the Atheist Republic, Victoria, BC consulate. Oh. So yeah, that's also still. Can you also be an admin of our Turkish page? Maybe get that active at some point. <laughs> uh, not... Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can, we can do that. We can I do that. Even, I didn't even know there is one. We oh, have. I'll co- send you guys the information. They have yeah. Izmir, Ankara, Istanbul, and Adana consulates on that. I, I mean, on Facebook. Okay, it's yeah. Republic. Yeah. Okay. And we we we, we make it most most of our advertisement on those groups as well. So you know, I really we are, like we are already there. <laughs> a consulate, you know, an atheist republic consulate. I love yeah, the yeah. idea. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It goes with our calling them consulates. Goes with our branding of being an atheist republic, it, which is funny because there was a guy in Malaysia, and he was very upset that we had. Uh, one of the one of the many Muslims that were upset with uh, with the fact that we had a consulate in Kuala Lumpur was like this is like a consulate in the Republic. This is because they're using these names. This is treason. This is another nation. <laughs> like like they're like they could these people should be executed for treason. And then the it's funny because our members in Kuala Lumpur were making fun of this guy. They say like okay you have to go after Banana Republic as well because they are using the same terminology. <laughs> You know what? Uh, I uh, I think it's a shame that uh, Ankara, Istanbul, and Izmir they all have a consulate. Ankara, for example, it's the capital city of Turkey. It should have an embassy, not a consulate. Right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You guys, uh, you know, not following the terms. So. No, <laughs> he's gonna. Point. Now he's gonna start calling the pages as embassies. Yeah. Yeah. We. So. we... <laughs> no, 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 no. Wait a nope. minute, you need to take some research about it. You need to be precise. The one okay. in the capital city is an embassy. The one okay, in- okay. Um, let me let me tell you actually something. Uh, in the capital, you have an embassy and a consulate next to each other. So you yeah. can still have a consulate, right? So we think like we need, we still need consulates in every city, which is city specific. When we will have embassies, the embassies will be country focused, right? So yeah. we still need consulates in uh, even in capital <laughs> cities. Yeah, but you do need, you know, the, the thing that's embassies. missing. You do need an embassy. We do need embassies, yes. Yeah. <laughs> right. Anyway, this is fun. Um, thank you, guys. This was very educational and interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Thank yeah. you for. Yeah. So, thank you again, for link in us. the description. Link in the description. Go. I mean, even if you can't, if even if you can't afford helping financially, uh, go follow the pages. Follow them on Twitter. 
um, share their content, share it maybe with people that can help them financially. Um, again, you know, we, we atheists keep on claiming that, oh, you don't need religion to be moral. Atheists are as moral as religious people. You can't just say that, okay? You have to actually follow it up by doing stuff <laughs> to, yeah, to, yeah, to, yeah. to I mean, prove I mean, that to I prove that claim. So right? try getting in their shoes, shoes when you think about those people. I mean, uh, again, uh, I live in a country that uh, I wouldn't get executed for being an atheist, you know, and I wouldn't go to jail just just simply for saying they don't believe in God. Uh, so I'm so I'm more comfortable right now. We try to get in those people's shoes. Uh, especially people who live in, uh, in, in more secular countries, like uh, some EU countries, some North American countries. Uh, I mean, that, that person could have also uh, born in, in a different country, like in, in Iran or something like that. Um, so those people are trying to, to, to get their freedom back, and, and, and that's very difficult. And if, we, and if we don't help them, they may have to unfortunately give up on that dream and we don't want this to happen right and what you said about you know um uh you know uh being good without god is that you know or having you know morals and stuff like um to uh to help that in turkey what we did was uh, as the turkish ngo we have distributed soup to the homeless Uh, every Wednesday night for three years straight at the uh, city center of Istanbul, Taksim Square. Uh, for three years, every Wednesday, we uh, gave uh, soup to homeless and we just wanted to show people that you can be good without God. Mm. That's awesome. Um, when, you, uh, when you eventually have a Persian-speaking volunteer, Uh, or staff, both, either volunteer or staff, you know, or both. Um, can you get them to, if they're a good speaker, uh, can you get them to come to our Persian speak? Because a lot of per there's a there's a shit ton of Persians that are in Turkey right now, and a lot more that are trying to get to Turkey from Iran. And they constantly con contact Atheist Republic, like, hey, I need help, what do I do? And there are actually some even people even contacting us and saying that, hey, we want to help, Where, what do we do, right? Um, so if, they, if, these per, if these people could maybe get introduced to, to your program in Persian, because a lot of them don't speak English, um, if, somebody could in, if I could interview somebody in Persian for that audience, that would be amazing. Yeah, I will try to uh, get somebody. Uh, probably the person who will we will hire as the case manager of uh, our app program uh, will be able to uh, speak. But uh, as soon as we have a Persian uh, speaker, I think we can do, go ahead with that show as well. I'm hoping to get a lot of maybe maybe I'm not promising anything, but I'm hoping to be able maybe to in the show like that to even ask if people are willing to volunteer to help your staff. Um, and I'm hoping that a lot of people would be lining up. Maybe a lot of Persian people in Turkey that would be listening to us might be interested in just help, helping without pain in some way. Yeah, we 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 will we are opening our arms to the volunteers because uh, you know like. Uh, 95% of our organization, except we only have a general manager full time. Other than that, you know, everybody is volunteer. All of our directors, volunteers, uh, that's all on a volunteer basis. Uh, to become a volunteer of our organization, we have some threshold. Mm -hmm. So our uh, threshold is that you will need to commit 30 minutes of your time every week in order to become a, a volunteer of Association of Atheism Turkey. Mm -hmm. And if you like to be a director of the organization, our threshold is you will need to commit 30 minutes every day to the organization. Mm -hmm. You will need to contribute 30 days of your time and effort every day to the organization. So yeah, the volunteer is 30 minutes per week and director is 30 minutes per day. So mm -hmm. that's the... Um, you know uh, yeah that's the cost system we have <laughs> huh. you, 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 you couldn't find any other name for that could you <laughs> <laughs>
That's it. Awesome. Right. Well, thank you guys for joining us. Uh, super informative. I'd like to encourage our audience one more time. Please go check out the GoFundMe. They're doing really amazing work. I threw you guys some money. So I'm hoping uh, that this can really lift off the ground. So nice. And thank you. we're excited to yeah help you guys move forward with this. So thank you very much for your contribution and thank you very much for your help. And uh we love ATS Republic and we are looking forward to be back here on different topics and we are looking forward to collaborate more uh, and let's try to make the best out of, uh, you know, what we can. Because awesome. yeah. no one should be left behind. Ah, that's right. Yeah, that's perfect. Perfect way to end it. All right, and we'll stop recording.